being in, in on this platform for a year, over a year, it is saturated. But I think the hardest thing to do is to differ differentiate yourself. And because it's very easy to be like everybody else, be like the rest of the pack, jump in, do the same trends, and, you know, get the followers, subscribers, whatever it is you want, and be like that. But I feel like I wanted to stay true to me um, and how I feel. How would I feel in a year from now that I see myself posting these things if they will make sense to who I am? If they don't, then I really don't. What's going on, everybody? What's going on? We're back. And I wanted to share a new book that I have. Have you ever heard of it? I'm pretty sure you have. It is called Lynchpin by Seth Godin. And I know I've been reading lately a lot of books of just like a lot of spirituality books, uh, following your passions, following your gifts. I really dive deep into that sector. And I wanted to just, I'm trying to tackle down. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have done this, but. There was a moment where I got inspired and I said, you know what, I'm going to start reading the books that I've been wanting to read that I haven't read in a long time. And I hear a lot of, you know, a lot of people on social media post the books online, how these books are great. So I, I normally take my phone and I, and I write it down and I save it. And then um, if you haven't checked it out, I go to a, a app, um, not an app, but a website. It's called uh, Thrift Books, where, shout out Thrift Books, <laughs> where you can buy books that are used. Um, so I think this cost me like three bucks. So I, I went in there and with $20, I must have bought like five books. With 20 books, I went in there and I took, um, you know, the books that I thought I wanted to read. Now they all came at the same time and with the kids, with the YouTube channel, with the content creation, editing and stuff like that, I haven't had time to get to it. But little slowly but surely, I've been trying to dedicate myself, you know, 15 minutes a day at least. Uh, or when while I have my coffee, read the read some couple of read a couple of pages and I get it done. So I just finished another book and I just started this book. And now I thought it was just gonna be a straight up marketing book, right? Because Seth Godin is like the marketing god, right? He uh, he's the author of the Purple Cow, the Dip, and Tribes. And so far in the beginning, it's kind of the same inspirational. It's kind of a great book that's kind of letting us know that we are here for something more one and how to different differentiate ourselves from if you work for a company your employees i mean your co-workers and if you own the company or brand how to differentiate yourself from other businesses and brands and i couldn't have had gotten this book at a, a greater time because being in, in on this platform for a year over a year it is saturated but i think the hardest thing to do is to differ differentiate yourself and because it's very easy to be like everybody else, be like the rest of the pack, jump in, do the same trends and, you know, get the followers, subscribers, whatever it is you want and be like that. But I feel like I wanted to stay true to me um, and how I feel. How would I feel in a year from now that I see myself posting these things if they will make sense to who I am? If they don't, then I really don't think about it. But for the most part, I've been trained true to myself and just sharing my ideas and thoughts and how I feel. And really talking to myself. This channel is really for myself that I, I chime in, I go in, and I listen to myself talk and remind myself on what things I might have to keep on working on and what things I should take action upon, right? So just want to share some quick tips before in the first chapter. You know, he gives us um, some analogies that I thought were pretty cool. So first of all, um, he he definitely gives us a pointer where we have to kind of understand, especially very relative now in, in days, you know, I come from, I worked for a union for a couple of years and it was very secure. Um, it was very, very, uh, you know, pay was okay, great benefits, um, great for my health insurance, you know, life insurance, all the packages, right? 401k, all the, all the bells and whistles. But at the same time, I did feel like I 
could be replaced. It was an, a mundane job, and and anybody can come in and walk in and do the same job that I did. There was there was nothing special that I can add to it. I try to make it as as special as I could. I try to be myself. I try to make you know obviously make other people feel special. Um, and be myself and just treat people as I w would want to be treated. So I felt I differentiated myself on that level. But at the end of the day, I still was, was basically fired, right? And that was a reminder for me, kind of like how there are no secure jobs and how um, the belief of that, it, it, there still are jobs out there, but they won't be sustainable. So... In, in this book, it says, basically telling us how the world has changed. And I'll give you, I'm paraphrasing from here. He says, I grew up in a world where people did what they were told, followed the instructions, found a job, made a living, and that was that. Sound familiar? <laughs> it's kind of where we still are. I feel like I grew up that way as well, where, you know, I just, you know, was told, find a job, go for interviews, follow the instructions, you do good, you get your pay raise every year, and you have great benefits. And for some reason, I felt that that was still, like, not enough for me. <laughs> and maybe that's just me. A lot of individuals will be okay with that. So, basically, um, he says, because of the new world where, um, you know, outsourcing and automation came in, um, basically, um, there was basically kind of a, 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 a revolution. Everything changed. Now, machines were doing jobs of 10 people, and they are now, and now those individuals are not needed anymore, so now there's less jobs, now individuals have to go and find jobs. Um, you know, and he was basically saying that the middle class has suffered, right? Because uh, at that time, in those days, the factory jobs were very well paying, you were able to raise a family, you were able to have a good living. And all you had to do was show up, follow the rules, and you go home. There was nothing really you had to bring to the table, nothing to add value. There was nothing for you to, to I would say, create. And if you follow my channel, we, I believe we're all creators. We have our, that within us. We are innate level is to create. There's nothing else in this world but us. And everything that we see out there has been created by somebody. It wasn't, it wasn't just appeared in thin air. The, it was the, the person, the individual that had that idea, the vision and created it and now we have it this camera these lights that i'm using the computer behind me the books you know people this is all created by us by individuals and if you believe that then there's a reason why i think we all have that ability within us we are just letting us die down and, and, and we're asleep with it right so basically this book already reminded me of why we're living in a great time you know you have youtube you have insta you have TikTok, you have all these platforms where we can show our talents, you can impact others, you can be yourself if you want to, <laughs> be unique and attract your tribe and be able to to give back and also at the same time receive and be your own um, company, right? And treat others with respect and not have to fight for, um, excuse me, for a job because we all have our own uh, independent um, income sources. So, in a way, it has made us, I feel that, you know, more dependent on each other because now we know that we're all connected and we have to kind of really understand what each individual brings, right? Like, I have a bunch of friends and everybody has their own, like, niche, right? I have some that are photographers. I have some that are mechanics, right? They, they know how to put together a car and break it apart. Some that are barbers, right? They were able, I haven't got to the barber yet, but yes, they cut my hair <laughs> and that's their innate ability, their skills, right? Um, and every each and every one of them, that's what, you know, what they feel they must do. So where is it that we're not following what we feel we must do? Like, where is it that we're missing that point? Like, where is it that we're, you know, that link? We wanna find that link on why we're not there, right? Um, and that's why I wanted to share with, share this with you guys. Um, but that being said, <laughs> I feel the video goes crazy. But um, he's basically saying all the jobs. If you have right now a job, and the job 
is a great job, benefits, and all that in, in sense. Most, for the most part, you are replaceable. And especially we're talking about, you know, basic uh, entry-level jobs at certain companies. Administrative, maybe labor, uh, maybe, uh, you know, cleaning or um, even the typing, um, inputting, uh, clerks, whatever it may be. All these jobs that are basic jobs, you're replaceable. And that job is probably not going to, you know, really... When it comes down to pay raise and you go out there and you claim your pay raise, they're not going to really, I would say, care for it because they know you can be replaced. Now, if you're in a different position where you're kind of the main, you know, you're very, you input a lot in the company and you bring a lot of value or maybe a sales rep, maybe a, uh, a top, um, you know, performer that brings in a lot of revenue, they might think twice. But if you're just sitting down and doing the mundane task, you're replaceable. And... I learned it the hallway. <laughs> so basically, here is what I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of rephrase in the next chapter where you want to set yourself apart as an employee or as your own brand. Um, and the only way you can do that is by ind individualizing yourself, finding your talents, your technique, your, your gifts, and understanding that you, the way you treat obviously others will always go in full circle, but how, at this moment in time, in, in the era that we live in, how much is it important to, to stay true to yourself, be yourself, make that your brand, and I think we lose that, because we see a lot of, especially social media, I have follow, uh, from individuals that I follow, they have over a million followers, they have a lot of influence, as we call them influencers, and they have their own, you know, group, uh, I would say, on video editing, their own um, copywriters, they have a team. So to compete with that would be, for me, would be um, self-defeating. So I don't, but I think I I do still watch their 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 um, content. I I love it. I I support because I think we all bring our own things to the table. But I understand that they're on a different level. That's their you know uh, brand. And my brand is totally different, and I have to stick to that. And I think we all have our own brand within us. I just feel like we're afraid that it's not enough, and that's something that's whole different, a whole different conversation. But yeah, we are not accessing that because we feel that it won't be enough. Um, and let's start there. So, in this new world that we live in, um, he basically states that. It's actually an opportunity, it's actually a blessing that we have to start creating for ourselves. And being indispensable in a company, we have to be ourselves. You can't just follow the, the, crow, the crowd, you can't just follow instructions, you have to bring solutions. And as far as entrepreneurs as well, you have to provide solutions for everybody else. What solutions are you providing, how are you bring those solutions, and how are you taking care of your customers, same way if you're an employee, how are you taking care of your company, how are you following up with everybody else, and what it is that you represent. Um, and these are tough questions, obviously, but these are the questions that will def will separate you from the pack. And I don't know, I just thought about the last night. I wanted to talk about this. So let's go ahead and next in the next episode. Stay tuned. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace. And choose significance here in this world. And I think we're all on the same journey. That's what we all want to be able to know what are we here to do. And, um, I think it's one day at a time, so um, let me cut the video short. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Um, and look out for my videos, guys. Thank you so much for following me. I appreciate you guys. And don't forget to like if you do and subscribe. I'll see you guys.